Hello, Alternative Instruction Delivery for Math 2231, March uh, 17th, 2020. Uh, we're going to look back for a moment uh, because we learned last time in class uh, how to find the extrema of a function on a, uh, on a closed interval. So here's a function. Uh, and you're defined the extrema on the closed interval, minus 1 uh, to 2. You want to validate this satisfies the if part, and then the then part follows. And so find the uh, absolute extrema of that function on that interval. Uh, you really should use the YouTube controls to uh, pause, rewind, and play. And you should be pausing right now and doing the work. But I will talk about it. So we begin by differentiating the function. That is a continuous function. In fact, it's differentiable on that uh, closed interval. So you take the derivative, and when you take the derivative, you're going to get 12x cubed minus uh, 12x squared. You can factor the 12x squared out of there, and you find that x uh, is equal to uh, 0 or 1. Uh, there are no values where f prime does not exist, and so um, you don't have to worry about that kind of critical numbers. So then you do the left endpoint, the right endpoint, and the critical numbers, and you find that the minimum happens at 1 minus 1, and the maximum happens at 2, 16. Here's a picture of it, and you can see how um, that does, in fact, uh, verify the calculations that we uh, here's a problem dealing with a honeycomb. This is a word problem and maybe more interesting than many that we'll study. Uh, the surface area of a cell in a honeycomb is given by uh, this equation. If this were a class in uh, physics, uh, I probably would ask you to derive that equation. So here we have this equation, uh, h and s are positive constants, and theta is the angle where the upper faces meet the altitude of the cell, and you can see the picture, that's the, um, that's the angle that we have. Uh, find the angle theta, where theta runs from pi over 6 to pi over 2 that minimizes this surface uh, area. Again, you want to pause the video, uh, work on the problem, and then return to check to see how your solution was. Please note that this is the same kind of problem. We have a closed interval for theta, and we have a function that exists on there. And in fact, that's going to be a function that satisfies the hypothesis of the uh, mean value, uh, not mean value theorem, extreme value theorem. Okay, so here's what you do. You'll go through and you will uh, take the derivative of s. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to divide this um, sine into that. That's 1 over the sine. That makes that the cosecant. And this is going to be the cotangent. That's the easiest way to take the derivative. You take the derivative with respect to theta and simplify it. Uh, getting this expression, you factor out the cosecant of theta. Now I've got things being multiplied together equal to zero here, but um, the cosecant, as you know, is never zero, so this must be zero, meaning those two things have to be equal. That means that theta is equal to the arc uh, secant of the square root of three. Um, and uh, you do have to evaluate that, the, both the sine and the cosine, at the arc secant of square root of 3. These are nice little trig problems you should make sure that you know how to do. And then if you plug these values in, you get the same value for the endpoints, but when you put the arc secant of um, three, square root of 3 in using these relationships, uh, you will get uh, this value. Uh, by the way, there's a typo here. This one should, one of those, they both are the same value as you can see. One, this one probably should have been pi over 2. In any event, uh, that's what you get. And so the smallest of these three numbers happens when you have the square root of 2 here. So that's the minimum. This is the exact answer. And if you did an approximate answer, it would be that. Uh, I'm mostly going to be asking you for the exact answers. Um, and we also, last time, uh, did discuss Rolle's theorem, and I even talked a little bit about a proof of it, but let's recall what it is. If we let f be a continuous function on a closed interval, a, b, and differentiable on the open interval, a, b, and if it's nailed down at the endpoints, that is, f of a is equal to f of b, then there's at least one number c in a, b, such that f prime at c is equal to zero. And again, this happened because it had to go up, it had to go down, it was differentiable, so you got a peak there where the derivative would, either, uh, would be zero. 
And here's the problem uh, applying that. So we have a f of x there, and we want to find all values in c in that interval, minus 2 to 2, such that f prime of c is equal to 0. You should pause, try to work the problem, and, uh, and rewind. Again, this is going to involve um, Rolle's theorem. So here's the solution. Uh, the function does satisfy the conditions because if you check the endpoints, uh, it's the same value at the endpoints. It's continuous and differentiable on that. So there does exist at least one c. There could exist more. So we take the first derivative, set it equal to zero. We factor it, and we find not just that there are there's one, but in fact there are three values for which it equals to zero. So it's equal to zero at three different values, and that's the solution to the problem. Today, uh, our feature uh, attraction is going to be a very famous um, video, or very famous um, theorem, excuse me, called the mean value theorem. It would be a great video, too, if we made it into a video. Here's what the mean value theorem says. And realize named theorems, I may someday ask you to state the if and then parts. So if f is continuous on the closed interval, a, b, and differentiable on the open interval, a, b, then there exists a number c in f of, in a, b, such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Now it is useful for us to think about what this means. And so um, here I'm going to kind of compare this to Rolle's theorem. This is Rolle's theorem where we have the endpoints uh, kneeled down and we knew, oh, there has to be some point c in between a and b where the derivative is equal to zero. And in this case, they're showing a maximum value. Well, what we really do is we relax the condition that the uh, f be kneeled down at the endpoints. We allow it to slant. And uh, now what we do is we say, oh, yes, but if I had this slant, uh, what I'm really saying is there is a point where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. And that is really the interpretation of the mean value theorem. It is a very important theorem, as we'll uh, see going forward in this course. Uh, the proof actually even works very much like the picture that I just showed you. We create a function, and so we just say create a function y that satisfies this. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to let g be the difference between the f of x that we have and this function y that we created. So g of x is equal to f of x minus this. And we, if we evaluate that at a and b, we see they're both 0. So this was kind of constructed to make it look like Rolle's theorem. And because it's continuous, um, g is also continuous. Because f is continuous, g is continuous and it's differentiable, so g is differentiable. So you can apply Rolle's theorem to g. So there exists a number c in a, b, such that g prime of c is equal to 0. But that means that g prime of c uh, is equal to 0. That means you take the derivative, you get this expression. And so if this is equal to 0, then there does exist a c. It's the same one that we were talking about, uh, such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Now, several things I should say. I know I'm just reading to you. But the mean in the mean value theorem refers to the mean or average rate of change of f on the interval a, b. Uh, we can use this in direct problems, and I'll probably ask you some of that. But this is one of the most important theorems in calculus because uh, this is how we will prove the fundamental theorem of calculus later. In the middle of that proof, we will um, um, invoke the mean value theorem. And um, geometrically, the theorem guarantees the existence of a tangent line that is parallel to the secant line through those points. Um, and uh, we, you can talk about various uh, geometric interpretations of it. So there must be a point at which the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change if we do this in, uh, in a physics context. Um, this theorem was re invented by the great mathematician Lagrange. Um, and uh, he was born in Italy and was in Germany for a while, but then was in France, and uh, it is kind of like uh, Abraham Lincoln, everybody claims him. And uh, Napoleon, uh, who thought he knew everything, uh, you know, hung around with a lot of mathematicians, not only Lagrange, but um, uh, Laplace as well. Okay, let's uh, then uh, consider the um, 
problem here. Given f of x equal 5 minus 4 over x, find all values c in the open interval 1 to 4. Notice that between 1 and 4 we don't have a problem with this denominator being 0, so that's good, such that f prime of c equals f of 4 minus f of 1 all over 4 minus 1. You see here what we're really asking is let's find the value of c that gives us, <clears throat> that satisfies the mean value theorem. That's another way I could have said this. So again, you should pause this, try to work the problem, and uh, then come back and uh, compare your work to what we did. Okay, so uh, first of all, we have to figure out what is f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. We do the calculation, we find that that is 1. We also should note before we invoke the theorem that it does satisfy the conditions of the mean value theorem. It's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the uh, open interval. So by the mean value theorem, there exists at least one number such as equal to z, uh, equal to um, uh, f prime of c is equal to 1. So if we solve that equation, we take the derivative of this, we get that, and that tells us that x could be plus or minus 2. But only one of those values is in the interval, and so the answer to the problem is c equals 2. And here is, we can see at, uh, whenever we graph it that in fact the slope of the tangent line whenever x is equal to 2 is um, the same and is parallel to the secant line. Here's a word problem. Uh, and it's important to do word problems because I will ask you word problems and life is a word problem. Two stationary patrol cars equipped with radar are five miles apart on a highway and there's a picture, you, don't, you could have drawn the picture yourself. As a truck passes the first patrol car, its speed is clocked at 55 miles per hour. Four hours later, when the truck passes the second car, it is at 50 miles an hour. Prove that the truck must have exceeded the speed limit of um, 55 miles per hour at some time during the four minutes. This is a little bit like um, the question I asked you in the Jim Goes to Indianapolis story. Uh, I said, oh, uh, my average speed going to Indianapolis was 70 miles per hour. Uh, do you think I went 70 miles per hour the whole time? And you say, no, you were going uh, very slow. Uh, when you were first leaving your home in Wheaton and uh, to do 70 miles an hour you had to start going faster. This means intuitively you do understand uh, the mean value theorem. Okay, so pause this, try to do the problem, and then come back and look at the solution. It really is to your advantage to try to do these problems. Here's the solution. Uh, we're going to let t equal zero uh, be the time when the truck passes the first car and the time when it passes the uh, second uh, uh, car then is, um, uh, so this is, uh, let's see, they were separated I think by, um, uh, let's see, so the time it passes the second car is 4 over 60 or 1 over 15 hours. So we're going to let S of T represent the distance in miles traveled by the truck. And notice that uh, we have, these are the values at 0, and at 1 over 15 hour, we, we have that. So the average velocity of the truck is given by, we just use the slope of the, this, and the average velocity was 75 miles per hour. Now, you can assume that the position uh, function is differentiable. Mother Nature often is kind and makes things pretty smooth. That means the mean value theorem can be applied. That means that the slope or the, uh, the speed, the instantaneous velocity, if you want to, had to be 75 miles per hour sometime during the four minutes, and they would be justified in giving this person a ticket. A useful alternative form of the mean value theorem is, uh, is given here. So if f is continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB, there exists a number c in AB such that, and this is just solving the mean value theorem a little bit uh, differently, and they call it alternative form of the mean value theorem. And uh, keep in mind that polynomial functions, rational functions, and trig functions are differentiable at all points within their domains, and so those uh, mean you can often apply the mean value theorem to those. Uh, here is a problem dealing with a plane. A plane uh, takes off at uh, 2 p.m. on a 2,500 mile flight. After five and a half hours, the plane arrives at its destination. Explain why. There are at least two times during the flight when the speed of the plane is 400 miles an hour. 
And so again, you should pause this, try to work this problem, uh, play and uh, in, in rewind as needed. Okay, so basically this is a mean value theorem. Uh, you, what you can say is that uh, at zero, you're at a point zero at five and a half hours, you're somewhere that we're calling 2500 away from there. So that means there is a T zero between those two such that the derivative, which is the velocity, is equal to the average rate of change. So that means the average rate of change was um, uh, more than uh, 400 miles an hour. Now, so we reached more than 400 miles an hour. Here we get to apply another one of our named theorems, the intermediate value theorem, because the velocity function is, uh, is continuous on those intervals. You see there at least two times when the flight was going 400 miles per hour because what happened is uh, it was when he was uh, you know going faster uh, speeding up and slowing down uh, that he uh, that he hit that and so uh, we've solved this problem uh, one final problem I think that we'll do is this one uh, determine the values for a B and C it says that this function X satisfies the hypothesis that's the if part of the mean value theorem on the interval 0 3 and so there is an f of x, a piecewise defined function. Uh, you should pause this, look at your notes, and try to solve this problem. There is value in trying to solve problems. And then we'll come back and look at a solution. Well, we know it's continuous, and that will tell us, since it's continuous, that tells us that this number that was called b has to be 1. Uh, it also has to be continuous at 1, and that tells us that a plus 1 is equal to uh, 5 plus C and that tells us the relationship between A and C. Now since it's differentiable at X equal to 1 that means that A is equal to uh, 2 plus 4 which means it's 6 so that tells us that C uh, has to be uh, 2 and A has to be 6 and we solve it and then we have this is the uh, this is the solution and in fact uh, the solution notes that uh, G since uh, this is the same it's a continuous uh, uh, extension and so what we can do is we can collapse it and only have two pieces rather than one piece because x at zero equals um, uh, one regardless of those two definitions. Okay so that uh, concludes today's uh, lecture. Uh, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math it will make you strong. Till next time, take care.